On this episode, we offer strategies and advice to get you through this planting season. We also have another exciting giveaway in store for you. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Cup of Joe. Today we have Tommy Johns and Ben Pieper here. And we're going to talk about things that are on your mind uh, this week, at least from our viewpoint. And we'll start with Ben first. It's still raining, right? It is still raining, unfortunately. Um, spent all week this week so far out looking at, checking out stands on corn, soybeans, and actually I've spent a little bit of time in our wheat fields, our production wheat fields as well. Um, I'm getting a lot of phone calls. Tommy, are you getting a lot of phone calls on what, 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 what does replant look like right now? Getting a lot of phone calls on replant as far as uh, a lot of farmers concerned about their soybeans that have been sitting in the ground for two and a half, three weeks. Um, it's kind of a fun call to go out on because we're – we're used to seeing, you know, Mershman soybeans, they can have about 30 days of underground protection with the biostimulants and the treatment that we have. Um, so it's a lot of a learning point, but there is some PPO damage in some soybeans out there, Ben. Um, uh, there's been some uh, concerns as far as corn not sprouting, not necessarily ours, but some of the ones that I've been on, uh, the two cases in particular that I've been on that weren't um, the corn that we sell, but uh, just kind of some dead seeds in the ground. Um, PPO damage has been the top of the topic as far as uh, soybean replant goes, and then I would say the weather coming out, washing out, drowning out. You know, anything beans not having oxygen, um, being underwater has been an issue. I think the only spots that I've seen so far, mm -hmm. the only real spots that we have to worry about for replant are still in the areas in the bottom of terraces yeah. and the places like the they call them buffalo wall wallers or whatever you want to call them. You know that that shallow little place out right. there, the prairie style soils where the water's that, standing correct those are the only places that we really have to worry about replant yep. which is phenomenal for what we've been through oh absolutely yeah there's no question about it when you take the oxygen away from the seed it's going to die but yep. but to your point tommy uh, our seed treatment is robust rates in order to give you a longer protection protection we say 21 to 30 days and then the fact that the biostimulants uh, put in there, there they give the right amount of help uh, to that plant to be able to when it comes under stress to fulfill it from the nutrient side and from plant hormones and from uh, bioenzymes to get that plant through the through that stress and do it as fast as it possibly can. So uh, I've been real impressed too with uh, the, the things that have been coming up. You know, staying in the ground three weeks and, and coming up and and seeing some real nice stands. So. Those folks that planted early, you know, week before Easter and right after Easter, um, you know, it's been a nervous time, but we're, we're looking positive. So that leads us to the next group of farmers that still haven't planted yet or still have a lot to plant, Ben. And I know that, you know, they're, they're getting concerned. I mean, they're saying, hey, are we running out of time? You know, here it is, May 18th. Are we running out of time? I don't necessarily think we're running out of time. I think that we may need to tweak our plans for what we have. We may need to start looking at once we hit, you know, because I don't, I think the, the good portion of uh, the Corn Belt is going to experience rain this week. I think that pushes us possibly into June 1st planting time um, for the guys that haven't gotten anything in the ground yet. At that June 1st date, maybe we need to start pulling away from our 114 day, depending on where we're at, our listeners are at, you know, that's a full that's season geography. variety around here. We, we may want to back down five days or so. So, you know, we may well look at 110 instead of 115 or 14 day variety once we hit that June 1st to June 5th mm -hmm. time frame, especially if you don't have like, like drying systems or something like that where harvest date comes into play. So. For, for that purpose, but we definitely don't need to walk away from corn or, or we don't need to make any big changes to your 50-50 yeah. your, uh, if you're corn following soybean options because at the end of the day, more likely than not you have a herbicide on or you have, a, uh, you have your nitrogen on. I mean, you just need to follow through with the plan because the season has not yet been determined. The, the numbers that when you look at, like, you lose a percent a day after the 15th of May, whatever that rhyme is, mm -hmm. That's based on lots of facts and knowledge, but we still have, we, we, we have a growing season, we have no idea what, what it looks like. And there is potential in this growing season to have plenty of moisture, plenty of heat, you know, an adequate pollination season. And, right. and I think that there's a chance that we can still raise a very decent crop with 
with what we have. And that brings up a good point because, you know, a lot of guys that I've been talking about that have mentioned or have talked about preventative planning, for example, I know that's been kind of a hot topic is we're still a long ways out from those decisions to be made. I mean, like you said, we got a full tank of gas with water, lots of water, and, and to get us through the growing season. And, and Joe had mentioned that possibly of a cooler August. Yeah, John Felt just yeah. published on uh, Friday that uh, the long-range forecast for July and August, because we have so much moisture sure. in our soil, mm -hmm. that's going to keep air temperatures cooler. So we're going to see a, a slightly cooler uh, July and August, which is very conducive to corn, because contrary to what people believe, you know, uh, 90, above 90, what, 91, 92 degrees, we start losing yield potential on corn. And really between 85 and 90 is the perfect temperature for corn. So I know a lot of our southern folks, you know, try to get away from corn if it gets late because it is too hot. Well, if we have all this moisture, it might be the year to stay with the corn. And if, if we see a switch from corn to soybeans, you know, the, the value of corn is going to come up. Uh, I mean, so you, you've, you've got a lot of strategies to look at. But I've always found, looking over the years, that that planting the crop and growing the best crop possible is still the best option because if you, you hope your neighbor takes preventive planting and you plant because then that's going to make the price of corn and soybeans go up and you're going to have a crop and then that leads us into you know some other considerations too with with what Trump has uh, proposed this uh -huh. week and that is the you know he, he's signaled that they're going to have some type of uh, support for the American farmer the soybean farmer because of the, uh, the tariffs. And, you know, we don't know how that's gonna look. Is it gonna be paid per acre? Is it gonna be paid per bushel? Well, if you're not raising bushels, you're not gonna get any, be right. able to participate in that. So if they do it like they did last year on a per bushel basis, you wanna go out and raise as many bushels as you possibly can. Right. So uh, I still think the, the best thing to do is, is plan to plan, plant your crop, do the best possible job you can, you know, because I've always been taught by my father, he says, do the best job you can, in the end, it'll be the right thing to do. Yeah, stick the course, too. <clears throat> I mean, it's hard to start making rash decisions at this point now with, uh, you know, especially when the days are kind of creeping down where uh, when it's time to plant and time to go, you're going to have to go and, like, and make stick those, the course. And make know? those decisions when it's time. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, a lot of these guys that are out looking at their beans, they're not coming, they're not coming, yeah. they're not coming, the corn's not coming. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, All we right. can do is just, I mean, there may be some cases or instances out there where you may be able to drag a rotary hoe or something like that, but those are few and far between, you know. Few and far, yeah. Just work on being ready. Make sure you have all your ducks in a row. Make sure that when the, when the time is ready to plant, make sure you have a good person by your side, Mershman Seeds Area Sales Manager, mm -hmm. to, to answer any questions you have. If, if, a, if it's a relative maturity deal, if it's a tweaking your, your process, Make sure that you have those people because the right thing to do is be absolutely ready when it's time to roll. Well, and remember what we've been saying the last few episodes, you know, planting today in narrow rows, you know, 20 inch or, or less, is like planting two weeks ago in wide rows. So you can catch back up on soybean yield, like, to, you know, if it's the 18th today, uh, it, it's like, it's really May 4th if you can go down to 15 inch rows right. if you plant today. So. Narrow your population, narrow your rows, increase your population on soybeans as it gets later. And that would be your best defense uh, to get more nodes out there and, and maintain that yield. And, um, but, and again, on soybeans, you stay with full season varieties because you want as much vegetative growth before you go into the reproductive cycle because soybeans are short day plants. Mm -hmm. They mature as the days get shorter. So the end of June is our longest day of the summer. And then our days start shortening up, and then soybeans, depending upon the maturity, will start flowering. So uh, we're opposite with corn. With corn, you know, you need so many heat units, and, uh, you know, you obviously want to get physiological maturity uh, and black layer before frost. So. so i got a hypothetical question, Joe. I've had this question a lot this week. Um, it's June 1st. I usually plant my beans at 120,000. How high do I push it? What's that number look like? 160, 140? Well, I, I think um, as a general rule, you start increasing 5%. You um, in know, so if you normally plant at 120, maybe go, you, you, you would start pushing towards that 140. You know, and uh, again, as you plant later and later, your plants are shorter and shorter, so therefore that's why you can stand more population. But 
But June first still isn't that critically critically late on soybeans in, in a lot of areas. You know, the, the latest we've ever had soybeans planted in our company, and we said this in a previous episode, was August fourteenth, and that was down near um, you know down in the, the Boot Hill, Missouri, along the uh, Mississippi River. So, and it still made they still made in the thirties. So we're not suggesting that's going to happen, but we've got plenty of time yet. And I've always found that nature, if they take a little bit of time away from me in the spring. They seem to somehow give it back yeah. to you in the fall, so Always hopefully we're going to get we're going to get that really nice September and early October, and, and we'll finish this crop. So <clears throat> right now, focus like you say, focus on being ready. Joe, you mentioned I listened to you yesterday on the WHO show uh, on the Big Show, and you were talking about maple trees. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you noticed the maple trees this year? I mean. In our area, mm -hmm. they are just clustered up with seeds. In fact, you go by a maple tree right now, and, and it looks like it's brown. It looks like it's fall. It's so many seeds. And my, the old timers, my grandpa always said, you know, when you got a lot of maple leaf seeds, that means you're going to have a good corn crop. So another nature, sign in nature that says yeah. things are going to be positive for growing corn, uh, because uh, obviously the maple trees know too. You know, they know produce a lot of seeds when there's plenty of moisture and when you got plenty of moisture you can, you can grow a lot of new new seedlings and that's no joke they are packed full seeds. they are packed and yeah. and, and uh, so that's something to keep keep uh, keep in the back of your mind yeah. I know uh, I know we do a lot of scientific things and everything but some of the old old time sayings still hold hold pretty true yep well anything else that you guys would like to add as far as uh, things that uh, are timely is from this week you know I just uh, I'll, I'll say one reminder. I know we have a lot of new soybean customers that have come come along with us this year, and we appreciate their business. But um, I do want to remind you know some of the cases we've seen for replant is they're not used to seeing beans staying underground for two and a half weeks and still coming up and surviving. So keep the course. If you have any questions, get a hold of an area sales manager, and we'll come look at it. Uh, but you should have a little bit of peace of mind knowing you have the best treatment on your soybeans, and they're going to be coming. It's going to show up big time this year, no Absolutely. question about it. Absolutely. Gonna... Well, I'd like to end today with uh, another offer. You know, last week we offered the uh, Cup of Joe Cup. Uh, I got one down here just to remind you. If you remember, I we said, hey, just send us something that you like about Mershman Seeds, and we'll send you a free cup. Well, that, that went over big time. Mm -hmm. Well, we just so happen to have, you know, for guys that don't drink out of the conventional coffee cup, maybe they like to grab and, grow, and go, uh, we have this tumbler cup of joe. And we'll do the same offer, except we want to ask you for a different answer to a different question. We'd like to know, what would you like to see Mershman Seeds do better? In other words, what's one thing that if you could pick one thing we could do better, would you suggest that our company do to improve? And if you do that and you send it to my email address, which will be listed uh, at the beginning of this episode, you will receive this uh, very, very nice uh, insulated cooler with a lid that closes. So you don't have to worry about it if you're on the go. So this, when we get to planning, I'm sure you're going to be running extra hours. You're probably going to need that extra cup of coffee to keep, keep going. So uh, this might be just the thing that will get you through safely uh, through planning. Cup of Joe for Cup of Joe. That's right. So... Uh, Thanks for watching today, and we appreciate your business. And again, send me one thing that Mershman Seeds could do better in your mind, and I'll send you a nice tumbler, insulated tumbler. Take care.